Speaking about um, Abu Dhabi is something that is likely to increase as the project passes certain thresholds, as it gets, uh, <clears throat> once the groundbreaking takes place, as exhibitions take place, even before the museum opens. So there is a need to communicate and to try to shape the message. It's, uh, the press will come to its own conclusions even if you don't do that, if you don't communicate. So I think that there's just a very practical need to, um, to, to begin to communicate and, and this is a very um, important audience to do that um, at the Prado in, a, in a, an academic surrounding and an academic situation. I think that there's, I mean, there are, there are conservative elements to most things, and the conservative tendency is also, a, tends to be a, let's call it a preservationist tendency. I mean, it's both a biological tendency and it's a social need. One has to take care of the artifacts of civilizations, whether they're buildings or, or other things. So some of these institutions and many individuals are relatively resistant to change, but also what you know, the evolution of human history shows us is that change is absolutely inevitable and that you have to prepare for change and try to anticipate change and to try to make continuous bridges between the, the, the past and the, the present and the future. So yes, I think that we have for quite a long time lived in a Eurocentric world you know, probably since the Renaissance, actually, where political movements, political movements has been characterized by a certain kind of colonial and paternal attitude toward Africa, toward the Middle East, and toward, um, you know, toward the Far East. I mean, Britain was the dominant power in the Middle East until 1956. I mean, they were in charge of Egypt, for example. And that's only... 50 plus years ago, it's not, it's, it was just yesterday in certain respects. And these nations have identities, they have needs, they have, they have beliefs, and as education becomes more per, 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 pervasive, these voices become stronger, and they are authentic voices. I mean, they are the inhabitants of a region. They have, they have an historical reason for being there, and they have an historic identity that they are looking to develop and to excavate. To the degree that this causes a fear in the West, well, I mean, the West has to deal with that. It has to get over, with, get over that because the, one of the biggest levelers is the market economy. You know, if you find that you can manufacture automobiles in India cheaper than you can in Europe, then of the same quality, and the Indians will be close to that quality, and why will it be cheaper? Because their labor costs are infinitely less, but the things will eventually come into balance. So the West has no choice but to engage the East, no choice whatsoever. And I think that cultural collaborations like this with Abu Dhabi can enhance that process because it starts out from a platform of, uh, of respect. Well, I think the potential for influence in the, um, in the Islamic world is huge because I believe that <clears throat> there's no doubt because of financial reasons primarily that Abu Dhabi has to engage the West because the West is its, is its biggest customer and it has then generates a lot of wealth and that wealth then gets invested and so they have a stake in these kinds of outcomes um, or outcomes in the rest of the world. At the same time they cannot build a wall around their own societies and not let um, the free flow of ideas take place. Well what the museum is about will be the free flow of ideas because that's what art has always been about. So if you big build 
largest monument to the free, to the free flow of ideas in the Islamic world, I don't think that you're going to be surprised at what the outcome is here because the outcome is that people will be engaged, people will learn that there's nothing to fear from this process of a free flow of ideas other than the loss of authoritarian power and that authoritarian power is eventually doomed to oblivion anyway. So, yes, this will have a gigantic impact. Huge. Bigger than anybody thinks. By far. I mean, the, the, the short answers to that question are opportunities, content, and resources. I mean, the presence of the Guggenheim in the Middle East will create for the Guggenheim extraordinary opportunities that it can't imagine. It will also generate access to content, to cultural narratives, which is the Guggenheim's fundamental business. So telling Arabic cultural stories in New York will be a natural thing, and there will be an audience for that because it's interesting, it's exotic, it's unusual, it's different, it's relevant. And finally, resources is that Abu Dhabi is in a situation where these institutions in the West have spent two centuries, you might say, building up capital, which usually take place in the form of their collections and their buildings and things like that. But they also need more resources to continue to operate and to continue to expand their collections and other things. And that's where Abu Dhabi will come in. It's where a collaboration can take place between um, institutions that have large concentrations of cultural capital and large ex concentrations of expertise and know-how. Abu Dhabi has a desire to have access to these, these things, and they have the resources to deploy to create those opportunities. You're right that it's a challenge, but I know the answer and you don't. <laughs> and so you will be surprised.